I'm Professor Kenny Hagland, and I spent my career teaching law, mostly at the University of Arizona, but also at UCLA and Harvard. About eight years ago, I gave up my course in sports law to pick up a, to teach a course in elder law. And frankly, elder law is a lot more interesting than sports law. I learned so, much thing, so many things that I should have known that I didn't know. Like you, I've seen a lot of ads on television about reverse mortgages and maybe living trusts. And I kind of have an idea a little bit about them, but I didn't know what they actually were. I learned a lot about uh, grandparents. I knew that many grandparents, I think it's like five million families are headed by grandparents in this country. And I didn't realize, however, all of the legal problems that that would engender. I knew a lot about uh, living wills. Indeed, I had a living will. What I didn't know is that they're not often, they're not followed in the hospital. And I didn't know how I could make sure that mine was if that time came. So I learned a lot of very interesting things. I learned also about, I knew that, that families go through the horrible situation where one of their loved ones becomes mentally disabled. I didn't know, however, what they should do about it, what legal steps should they take to mitigate the difficult times that would come. Teaching this to law students, future lawyers, was important, but I realized that it was probably more important to get the word out to people like me who didn't know all of these very basic things. So I decided to write a book, and I teamed up with a leading practitioner in the area of elder law, who spent his 30 years sitting across the desk talking to seniors and their families about real life problems. So we published this book. And the book actually, I think, was, was, is a good book. The head of the Commission on Law and the Elderly of the American Bar Association thought it was a great book. And he wrote, and let me read to you, it is an encyclopedic legal reference with the down-home philosophy and wit of Rill Rogers, wryly enriched by poetry, humor, and existential musings. I just love that because my parents loved Will Rogers, and I inherited a love of him myself. I realized, however, after a while, that some people don't want to buy a legal reference book. They want to buy, they want to know only if they're, let's say, a, a relative has to go into a nursing home. They want to know about that. So I decided to put together this series of videos that would pinpoint specific legal problems that you or your family may be having. Now, let me tell you right up front, this, the book and the series of videos are not self-help in the sense of giving you forms to fill out. Rather than a how to do it series, it's really a how to think about it series. We'll be talking about when you should see a lawyer, when you shouldn't see a lawyer. When you do need to see a lawyer, the series will probably save you money because you will be more informed of your legal situation when you go to see the lawyer and you will be more focused on your problem. But not only is there a lot of law in this series, there's a lot of the simply good down-home advice. For example, there are a lot of new books by physicians talking about how you can get, make sure that your doctor, your physician, is getting a correct diagnosis. What questions should you ask of the physician to help him or her make a better diagnosis? We talk about that. We talk about there's another segment on if you're caring for a loved one in your home, how can you make the house a little bit safer? How can you get some help doing that? That's a very, very difficult thing to do. We also talk about, we have a segment on when, when death strikes your family. Those are really hard times. What should you do in the first three or four days? What, what, what's going to happen? Uh, and we have some advice on that. Finally, and perhaps more importantly, we have a segment on how to talk to your family about things that matter. And when you see that segment, if you have that conversation, you're going to find that your life is going to go a whole lot better.
we're going to have some fun along the way. Uh, I'm known for telling bad jokes. Uh, we'll have a little bit of poetry. And of course, we will have existential musings as well. However, make no mistake about it, growing older is hard. It is not for sissies. A lot of studies show that elder people, seniors, are in fact happier than other age groups. However, hard times are coming. I'm reminded of a poem by A.E. Hausman. While the sun and moon endure, luck's a chance, but trouble's sure. And I'd face it as a wise man would, and train for ill and not for good. You can look at this series as a manual helping you train for ill, helping you prepare for the difficult times that will come, and helping you do things better for yourself and your family. Does training for ill work? A. E. Hausman ends his poem. The poem is about a king who knows his enemies are trying to kill him. And so he is preparing for that. They put arsenic in his meat and stared aghast to watch him eat. They poured strychnine in his cup and shook to see him drink it up. I tell the tale I heard told. Merithides, he died old.